chapter two is uh, going to be looking at atoms in the periodic table. So basically, in chemistry, we have this periodic table of the elements, and it talks about, um, it shows you what all the elements are, and based on how they are arranged in the periodic table, we can determine things about their chemical properties and kind of how they're going to behave. So one important thing about this chapter is make sure you have a periodic table with you as I'm going through the lectures. Um, it's always going to be helpful to have for reference. Uh, there's one with your book. There's one um, online associated with Blackboard for the course that you can use, and that's probably the best one to look at because that's going to be the one that you're going to um, have access to on your exam, just so you'll be used to seeing it. Um, okay, so just as a reminder, an element is basically going to be a pure substance that can't be broken down into anything simpler. Um, if you look at that periodic table, you'll notice that all the elements are identified by a one or a two-letter symbol. Um, you don't have to go through and memorize all the symbols. Uh, we're going to really focus on the first uh, 20 elements on the periodic table, and a few other ones in there are going to come up as well. Those ones you're probably going to need to know, um, or at least be able to identify based on the symbol. Um, in other words, you're going to need to know that Na is equal to sodium. Um, I'm not going to ask you that like specifically on a test, um, but whenever we start talking about compounds, like if it's going to be NaCl, you're going to have to tell me that sodium chloride. So as we go through this, you'll kind of uh, see which ones we need you need to learn. Um, and the ones, there's really no tricky letters on there with maybe one or two exceptions uh, with the elements that we're going to be looking at on the periodic table that we're going to be focusing on in this class. All right, so here is your periodic table. Um, like I said, you're going to really need to know the elements up through about calcium, which is here number 20 on the periodic table. Um, there will be a couple other ones that you're going to need to know. Uh, for instance, we'll, we'll talk about them as we move along. Um, but like a couple in the middle here, Fe is going to be iron. That's one that's going to come up a few times as we talk about things. And I mentioned that most of the symbols are pretty straightforward with their names. Um, the two that probably give the students the most trouble is P, which is going to be uh, phosphorus, and that is P for phosphorus. That one seems easy until you go over here to K, and K is going to be potassium. So both of those start with the letter P. K is going to be potassium. P is going to be phosphorus. So if you can get those two straight, you should be good with the rest of them. All right, so again, make sure you have a this periodic table with you as we go through talking about the rest of the uh, material in this chapter. This one or another one, we're going to talk about the features of it kind of as we go through uh, the lecture here. All right, so there are four main building block elements. These are going to be oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. So between these four elements, 96% um, of the mass of the human body is made up of, the, of these things. So water is most of our weight, right? So H2O, I'll fit in there. Um, our proteins are made of CO, Ns, and Hs. Our DNA is made of CO, Ns, and Hs. Our fats are made of CO, Ns, and Hs. So you get the idea that most of these um, main biochemical molecules that we're going to be talking about, um, particularly later on in the class, are all going to be made through these, uh, these four particular elements. Um, there are some over here, if you look on the right, where it says major minerals. So these are things that, um, if it says down here, it says each mineral is present in somewhere between 0.1 and 2% by mass. So they're not super highly abundant, but they're um, like not nearly as much as the, the building block elements. But these are in, there in a somewhat large amount. And these are things going to be like potassium and sodium and chlorine, which are going to be present in our body fluids. Um, Magnesium and sulfur are found often attached to proteins that are in muscle. Um, magnesium is also found attached to our ATP that floats around in our body. And then calcium and phosphorus are going to be found present in teeth and bones. So, right, you always think drink milk to build your bones, and that's because the calcium in milk is uh, used for those, those structures. And then over here on the bottom left, it talks about trace elements. So these are things that we actually have in our body and that are important. Um, however, they're present in a very small amount. So anytime you hear the word trace, it means that there's a very small amount of it. Um, 
In this case, it's going to be less than 0.1%. So these are things like copper and cobalt. And you might be thinking copper. And yeah, we actually have some copper in our body that's kind of actually involved in some protein work as well. Um, things like zinc and iron and fluorine. So again, these are a whole bunch of trace elements that are important, just in very, very small amounts. Um, when we talk about the elements on the periodic table, we're going to divide them into basically three categories. There's going to be metals and nonmetals, and then metalloids, which are kind of like a mixture of metals and nonmetals. And we're not actually going to talk a whole lot about the metalloids. We're going to focus most of what we do on either the metals or the nonmetals. So starting with the metals, the metals are going to be on the left side of the periodic table. Um, and they're going to exist as solids. Uh, the only one that's not a solid is going to be uh, mercury, which is a liquid. And metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. Um, if you think of like a car in the middle of summer, right, if the, the sun hits it and you put your hand on it, the car is really hot because the car is made out of metal and it's going to conduct that heat really well. Nonmetals are going to be on the right side of the periodic table and they have basically the opposite properties of, um, of the metals. They don't have a shiny appearance, they're not good conductors of heat or and electricity. And nonmetals can really be any of the states of matter. There's um, some that exist as solids, some that exist as liquids, and some that exist as gases. Um, I mentioned the difference between the left and the right of the periodic table, and I want to kind of um, go backwards here and kind of look at the periodic table and kind of point this out. So on the left of the periodic table, it's going to be everything you see in green here. So these are all going to be our metals. So everything in green here is going to be the metal. Hydrogen up here, I'm going to go ahead and circle hydrogen. So hydrogen is on the left of the periodic table, but this is an exception and this is considered a non-metal. Okay, so hydrogen is one exception. Even though it's on the left of the periodic table, that's going to be a non-metal. Um, okay, so the metals are going to be in green. Over here on the right, we said the ones on the right are going to be the, the non-metals. All of these over here, and then including um, hydrogen as well. And then the metalloids are kind of the ones on this bold line that kind of zigzags. It's kind of like a staircase. It goes like this. So the metalloids are the ones that kind of touch that staircase. That's going to be um, boron, silicon, and all the other ones kind of going down there. Those are the two that we're going to see the most, are the, the boron, which is B, and SI, which is silicon. Um, Again, we're really not going to talk too much about those, though. However, that's kind of where you get the distinction between the metals and the nonmetals. It's kind of anything to the left of that staircase is going to be a metal. Anything to the right is going to be a nonmetal. All right, so going back to our slides here. So the metalloids, again, are going to be the ones that are on that, uh, that staircase we just talked about. And they kind of have properties in between the two. And you can see um, there's seven particular elements in there. And again, we're really not going to talk about them um, any more than what we are right now and kind of identifying kind of what they are. So just know that along that bold line on that staircase are going to be your metalloids. Okay, so whenever we look at it, most things in chemistry, they, we don't, we're not going to look at it kind of pure elements. So elements are kind of that building block on the periodic table, but then Compounds are formed when multiple elements come together to form what we call a compound. So a compound is going to be something like H2O, right? So hydrogen and oxygen are the two different elements that come together to form water. C3H8 over here, this is propane. This is something you'll learn about later on in the semester whenever we get to the organic chemistry chapter. But C3H8 is propane, again, two different elements, carbons and hydrogens. So a chemical formula, the term chemical formula, refers to using the element symbols from the periodic table to identify the compounds, and then subscripts to show how many of them there are. So for H2O, right, we have hydrogen, and then the subscript 2 saying that there's two of them. For oxygen, we have the O, but we don't show the subscript. Because anytime you don't see a subscript, you just assume that the subscript is 1. So H2O means 2 hydrogens, 1 oxygen. C3H8 would be 3 carbons and 8 hydrogens. So again, this is what we mean by chemical formula. So if you're ever asked to 
give the chemical formula for whatever it is, this is what we're looking for, right? Something with the element symbols and then the subscripts to show how many of them there are. Now we can draw compounds many different ways and if you look through your book and as we go through the semester you're going to see them written a lot of different ways. So the chemical formula for water is here, H2O. Um, you can also see what's referred to as the ball and stick representation. representation. So here is the oxygen which is kind of like this red ball and then the sticks kind of connect the different atoms in this um, compound or the different elements. So right here is oxygen connected to hydrogen, oxygen connected to another hydrogen. So ball and stick representation uses these sticks, right, to connect the balls to each other. And then the third one you'll see quite frequently is what's called a space filling representation, right? So here, uh, let's go to this one down here. So you can see the red um, ball for oxygen connected to the white or the, the gray balls for hydrogen. And in this one, it's basically like a, a ball and stick representation without the sticks, and you kind of squish them together. So these are just ways to kind of represent what these compounds look like if you had like a super high-powered microscope and can look at things. You don't actually see sticks connecting them. Um, so it's a little bit more like the space-filling representation. Um, however, even in that space-filling representation, it's still not exactly right in terms of how they squish together like that. Um, so again, just different ways to look at it. But in your book, we'll use all of these depending on try on how they're trying to depict something. Um, also, different colors are represented by um, like represent different elements. So throughout your book, anytime you see like the black sphere here, that's going to be a carbon. The red's always going to be oxygen, so on and so forth. All right. Um, the sizes are also um, relative to each other, so hydrogens are always going to be the smallest. Um, and then like some of the things over here, like this bromine and this iodine, are going to be larger. And actually at the very end of uh, chapter 2 here, we'll talk a lot about uh, atomic size. So that's something we'll hit at the very end of this chapter.